What's going on everyone? Julius Randle. A report came out about an hour ago of the time of recording this video stating that the Lakers have interest in acquiring Julius Randle uh, if Donovan Mitchell was to go to the Knicks. Right, if the Knicks end up making a play for Donovan Mitchell, uh, there are reports that the Knicks would be interested on trading for Russell Westbrook as salary relief, right? So the Knicks would trade for Westbrook, buy out Westbrook, and unload several salaries. Very likely a package of like Julius Randle, Evan Fournier, and Derrick Rose uh, in order to clear salary. And then you have Donovan Mitchell, you have Jalen Brunson, you have Barrett, who you need to extend, and then build a team around that, and you're still probably good enough to compete at least for a playoff spot this upcoming season. And Julius Randle for the Lakers, now, he's a guy that doesn't make a lot of sense currently. I, I like Julius Randle as a player. I've always, you know, followed him. I always thought he was great. I, I loved when he was on the Lakers the first go-around. I thought he had a lot of potential. Uh, when the Lakers drafted him, I was like, that's great, you know, number seven pick, all of that stuff, and he really was a, a solid addition, and he's only improved, right? I mean, Two seasons ago, the guy was damn near a triple-double, night in and night out, shooting 40% from three, was an all-star, just looked like a dominant player. He looked like the Julius Randle that many people thought he could be when the Lakers originally drafted him. The problem is now is that Anthony Davis wants to play the power forward. He's probably best at his natural position, which is power forward. He doesn't really like to play center. You got a bunch of big guys already, so Davis could play the four. So where does Julius Randle fit? Because the thing is, is as great as Julius Randle is as a player, fit is a big thing. I mean, we saw that with Russell Westbrook this last year, right? And if Julius Randle is the Julius Randle of last year, he was as bad, if not worse, than Russell Westbrook was. And he's on a long-term contract. So now you're talking long-term salary. And if he doesn't work out to be the Julius Randle from two seasons ago, you're in trouble. Now, if you could get the Julius Randle that was playing at like damn near an MVP style level, then that's great, right? And then it's kind of like, at that point, you kind of figure it out. You make it work, you know? Uh, you you kind of have, maybe you start Davis at the five, uh, you bring Randle in at the four, and you kind of have that be the thing. Julius Randle, could he play the three? Possibly, but you know, he's more better suited as the four. That's where he's really a mismatch. He's a great rebounder. He's got the good size. He's a guy that can grab the ball off the off the uh, you know backboard and just charge downhill. He can facilitate forever. He gives you a little bit of everything. He's a guy that can get you, you know, 15 to 20 night in and night out. He's a guy that can give you some assists. And if he's like, you know, the third option, there's not as much pressure for him to be the Julius Randle from, you know, a couple years back, right? Again, fit is a big thing and it's long-term salary. You're talking a big contract for the next four years and the Lakers lose all of their financial flexibility. And if he's not a Julius Randle from, you know, if he's the Julius Randle of last year, he essentially becomes untradeable because now you have no assets to trade him and he's a guy that becomes a huge liability. And how effective is he going to be with LeBron James, right? Because the reason Westbrook is ineffective is because you have LeBron James, who he is best with the ball. And, you know, you have all these pieces that need the ball in their hands. How is it going to work? How is it going to flow? Yes, if you get a guy in Evan Fournier, you kind of solve your shooting dilemma. He's a guy that can play defense. He has a solid rotation piece. Derrick Rose could be a really solid backup. I just, I don't see the Lakers really wanting Julius Randle. Could be completely wrong. I think, and it's something I've talked about for a while, is that if the Lakers do the Knicks deal, it's to reroute some of those assets in a Kyrie Irving trade. Because if the Lakers were to do, to do a deal with the Knicks, the Knicks are very likely going to give up a first-round pick. It doesn't mean that it's it's one of their picks. They have a whole treasure trove of picks. So it's like, what is the least favorable pick? Okay, we'll take this one, and we'll give that to the Lakers. So the Lakers would probably get a first-round pick. They'd get a couple guys, like I said, Rose, Fournier, and Julius Randle. And maybe the Nets would want Randle and Fournier or Randall and Rose, or, you know, Randall, Fournier, and Rose, something like that. My point is that maybe the Nets would want a combination or all of those players, and you'd have an extra first-round pick to reroute to the Nets as well. Like, hey, you wanted, you know, you wanted some players, you have no salary to go and acquire new players if Kyrie leaves, so here's three solid rotation guys to put around Ben Simmons and Kevin Durant, if you keep Kevin Durant, if you trade him, then you're just getting even more deeper. Um, but here's a first round pick from us. Here's our first round pick from the Knicks. And it's a win-win for everybody. That's what I think will likely will happen. 
if the Lakers are due to deal for the Knicks because the Lakers have been so specific about preserving cap space for next season. And if you go get these long-term contracts, you're stuck. And here's the problem too, is that if LeBron James leaves and doesn't sign an extension, now it's the Luau Dame and, Dane and Timothy Mozgov situation all over again. You got a bunch of guys that are essentially role players that shouldn't be getting paid the salaries that they're getting paid and now you're stuck with them for the next three to four years and you can't trade them, you can't do anything, you're stuck. And now the Lakers are, are sent back to the Stone Age for the next you know, four years. Now, on another note, Julius Randle and Anthony Davis, they do have chemistry, right? They played on the Pelicans together. Uh, that Randle was a solid Randle, but it wasn't the Knicks Randle, right? So maybe they can kind of remain and keep that chemistry. They, they're familiar with each other, at least. They kind of know how to feed and play off of each other. Um, they were a solid duo with the Pelicans. I mean, they weren't like, you know, contending, uh, but they were, you know, they, they had their moments together. And maybe with them and LeBron James, maybe you can make it work. Maybe it is something, you know, it's like push case, you know, break glass, a case of emergency type deal, type trade. But I just think you want Anthony Davis at the four for a majority of the games, the big games, the playoffs, stuff like that. You, you probably play Davis at the five. Uh, and, and then in those situations, okay, maybe Julius Randle would be beneficial, right? If he's a guy, especially if he's shooting 40% from three or even close to that, 37, 38%. If you can have him at the four, that could be huge come playoff time. But what does it look like leading up to that? You know, what is what what ends up happening? You know, the whole idea is to go big again and to have, you know, that, that 2020 Lakers team, but more athletic, younger that, that kind of that's kind of the thinking with this roster currently. And this roster is kind of built and set up as a team that's ready to, to make a move beyond this, beyond the roster that they have currently. I just don't think Randall is that deal. I have nothing against Randall. I think Randall is a, an incredible player. I wouldn't be shocked at all if Randall turns out to be, you know, the Randall from two seasons. Last season was just a rough season for him. Maybe he just had a bad year, whatever. It's a real possibility. I'm rooting for him. I want his success. I just don't think he is a good fit for the Lakers. It has nothing to do with his talents. It has nothing to do with his skill set. It has nothing to do with anything other than fit and, and the type of player he is. And there's just too much risk in acquiring Julius Randle. I just think the Lakers are probably in their best interest to either do the Indiana Pacers deal, if that's the case. I would probably even do the, the Utah Jazz deal at that point, and maybe even the one with Mike Conley, which Mike Conley's on a bad, terrible contract, not really big on taking on Mike Conley, but at least he's a guy that would fit better than Julius Randle. Uh, I don't think he's anywhere close to as good as Julius Randle, but he's a veteran that's been there. He probably wouldn't mind coming off the bench, although he's making starter money, so it's kind of like, do you have him come off the bench? My point is, is that I just think that that would be a much better deal overall if you could get something like you know say Mike Conley uh, you know Bogdan and you know uh, uh, say Beasley you know you can get a deal like that that's great you get two wing players you get a, a guard that could start at point guard or come off the bench or he can you know even play the two guard whatever you get some flexibility there I think the Knicks trade doesn't give you that same flexibility and I just think it's, it's it could be a very clunky fit for a guy that's not a proven guy like if Julius Randle had more years like he did two years ago, absolutely, go trade for him and make that work. But up until that year, he wasn't that guy. And the year after that year, he wasn't that guy. He was arguably one of the worst seasons of his career since he was like a rookie. So that is not a good sign. That is not very telling. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on to you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you think, yeah. Lakers, stay away from Julius Randle, stay away from the next Knicks deal. We don't need long-term salary. We don't need to go get players that are going to mess up with our, our books, stuff like that. You know, especially if you have a chance to acquire Kyrie Irving, even if it's not this year, if you have the option of signing Kyrie Irving in the offseason, I think you preserve the cap to do so. You know, at least if you do the Utah deal, at Mike Conley, you could probably move um, if not, you might be able to work it out to where, you know, if Le maybe LeBron takes a pay cut and you go get Kyrie, you know, maybe you have Conley as the backup to Kyrie. I don't know. My point is you could probably make it work. It's a better deal. Um, but Lakers clearly want to preserve cap space. It's why they don't even want to take Joe Harris and the Kyrie deal because they want the cap space. 
to to re-sign LeBron, re-sign Kyrie, and then go try to get some other pieces or go get Buddy Heald or something like that. So I just don't see the Lakers doing this deal. But anyway, again, love your thoughts, opinions, however you feel about it. Let me know down in the comment section below. That being said, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me know you enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Follow by the bell notification. Stay up to date with all things sports. Join this wonderful community and all of our discussions. I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.